there are people still begging and praying for their bear market, which obviously happened in 2022. I, I, I just don't get why people can't see that it was priced in back then. What we had in 2022 was the rate cycle, inflation, and all assets went down. And um, long duration assets, crypto technology went down the most. The growth, the end of technology was down 70 odd percent. Crypto was down 70 to 80 percent. That perfectly coincided with the forward looking indicators of liquidity and financial conditions index, which suggested the same thing. Now, these are forward looking and they suggested that in 2023, we will see that economic weakness. Now, it's probably a quarter or two uh, later than expected, but I'm, I'm thinking we will flirt or be in recession this quarter and next quarter. And I've been saying that for quite a while now, but it matters not. It doesn't matter unless you're trading the Russell 2000 or the old economy or oil or copper. Those things trade present day um, economic conditions. So the ISM, which is right near its lows, start to try and turn. It's at lows that it's consistent with a mild recession. So do we get the recession? Do we not? Do we get to 0% GDP growth? Doesn't know, doesn't matter. It was all priced into the stuff I care about last year. We got down to pricing um, 38 uh, in the ISM. It was overdone. Crypto, same kind of thing. So as liquidity turned, I started recommending buying markets. It was first ETH in June. That was the first one to bottom um, of 2022. And then October, November, December, crypto and technology stocks. And basically, I've been long and adding ever since in all of that. Lo and behold, where we are today, Nasdaq's up almost 50%. The exponential age technology basket, when I look at it, is up 63%. Um, and crypto has gone bananas. So pretty good. Um, and exactly in line what I've been imagining, which is macro spring. Macro spring and crypto spring are the same thing because macro is crypto. I've explained all the way through. These are not different things. Spring, what is spring like? Spring is one day it's raining, next day it's sunny, then it's frost, then it's getting warmer, then you think it's going to be amazing. Uh, you get your T-shirts out and then it's freezing cold again. That's what spring is like. That's exactly what macro spring is like in crypto spring. So we saw spring and we saw choppiness, sideways ranges, a squirt up in the beginning, then slowed down. and then. We're now getting into late spring. Late spring, we start to see what I refer to as the banana zone, which is this massively positive end of year phase. Normally speaking, again, probabilistically speaking, and that's usually the end of crypto spring and, and macro spring. Then we start transitioning to summer. Summer is when rates start coming down, box looking like it's starting to be ticked. When inflation falls, that's happening. And as you know, my views on inflation are it is not sticky. It's mean reverting and it will go back down to 2% or lower. I think it actually goes negative in this cycle. And I think core inflation will go negative this cycle too. And that's what we're going to look for in 2024. And that will take people by surprise. And I think the Fed purposely orchestrated it. They want it. They want to see rates lower so they can refinance the debt. So. Interest rates falling, inflation falling, unemployment rising. And then when you look at the forward looking indicators, growth will be picking up from the floor. That is the perfect macro environment. So that is about to play out. So 2024, I think, is going to be normally these years tend to have periods of sideways consolidation or corrections and then these huge spurts. And we tend to see a couple of those during the year. So nothing can be a straight line, but it should be an extremely good year. And then 2025 will be even better, which is the transition from macro summer into macro fall, where everything kind of goes exponential before you start transitioning to winter, rates start going up again, markets pull back again, and we go through the same cycle. And that's been happening consistently since 2008. If you, if you remember, NASDAQ up, 40 odd, 45%, Solana up 500%, or Bitcoin up 120%. That's the magnitude of difference. And it only compounds over a bull market as you get into macro crypto summer. Um, this, this is where the real gains are made. So the GMI liquidity index year on year is now 
positive, uh, which is the big important part. On the outright um, <clears throat> index, it's still been flat for a while. Fed net liquidity is starting to rise. I think it'll rise again today. Um, so Fed net liquidity is up 10% this year, which is one of the reasons the markets are up. Um, we're starting to see the Chinese looking at stimulating. We're seeing others looking to stimulate as well. So again, 2024. So it'll do. It'll push Sol up, and Sol will go up more than Bitcoin, etc. Assets do price in recessions. Just some are forward-looking, and some are present day, and some are backwards-looking. Housing is backwards-looking. Commercial real estate will be backwards-looking. Those are delayed assets. We're seeing that in the crypto land, where NFTs. Pretty much as I predicted, bottomed last month, a month before, um, because they lag the ETH economy by about 15 months, much like housing and other stuff lags the traditional economy. We're still seeing, for example, Rolex watches and Patek Philippe prices, which are very similar in kind of trophy assets to NFTs, still falling right now uh, in the traditional economy. And that continues, that will continue for a little bit because the traditional economy is still low. Those things won't recover till probably 2025, maybe 2024. You know, buy and hold, don't use leverage, use cold storage, do the right thing, don't get too speculative, don't FOMO. These are this, this is the biggest opportunity we've ever been given. I've said that all the way from 2020 onwards. And in fact, I said it all the way back in 2012. It's the biggest macro trade of all time. And if you're not a crypto person, technology is one of the biggest opportunities we've ever been given, the exponential age. Just be careful. Just buy hold, have a long-term time horizon, and learn how to take pain. And when there is pain, you buy more. Unless something changes the thesis that suddenly we're all going to turn to ne Neanderthals and nobody's going to use technology ever again, it is going up. It's as simple as that. And unless something changes that we're not breaking the financial system and that the internet has disappeared, we will go to blockchain technology. It's as simple as that. That's all you need to know. Every three years, so in this four-year cycle, three years out of the four years, crypto is the best performing asset class on earth. The fourth year, it's the worst. Three years, best performing asset class, four years, the worst. Three years, the best performing asset class, four years, the worst. This year, this is the year one of the three, best performing asset class on earth. And each time you had that down year, you're going higher and higher and higher. The performance says everything. Are you choosing to be poor? Because that's what you do when you say you don't want crypto. Yes, it's volatile. I get it. It's not for everybody. I do get it. Dan Druckenmiller, Paul Tudor Jones, George Soros, Lewis Bacon, all of these guys. Um, if if um, Stevie Cohen, all of these people all trade crypto. These are all the great macro gods.